Good morning. Good morning. And the Lord be with you all. The Lord be with you too. So what's happening on the mission front? Well, it never stops. The beautiful thing about mission work is it is an ongoing thing that uh, we all participate in that will only end when the Lord comes back. So what is missions? Missions is sharing the good news with those who don't know. That's basically it. Whether you do it one-to-one, -one, whether you do it in an event, whether you do it in a workshop, it's all sharing Christ. And that's what we're here for in the first place. That's what brings us together is, is knowing Christ and sharing him. Uh, I wanna thank you all so much for being the fellowship of God. It's wonderful to be amongst you all the time and to see your smiling faces and to your, hear your encouragement. And that's what we are for each other. So what's happening? Well, Wycliffe, you, we met them, Jill and John Mork, a few weeks ago. It's almost a month, two months now almost. They're heading back to, uh, to, hate, to Papua New Guinea. It isn't so simple anymore. Well, first of all, there's the COVID restrictions and all the things you have to do for traveling with that. But things have gotten a lot tighter now with that country as far as missionary work and that kind of thing. It isn't that they're restricting it or taking it out. It's just making it more paperwork. So if you ever want to hear what it's like to travel internationally right at the present time, look at Wycliffe's folder, the binder in the, uh, the cafe, and read the, all the list of things that the, uh, the Morks have to do to get back down to the mission field. Uh, we have the privilege of having uh, uh, Pastor Ron Moore this morning again is studying our services, and Lutheran Bible translators, I'm sure, can give us similar stories of what, what's happening in Cameroon. We just had our uh, annual meeting this past weekend uh, for Lutheran Bible Translators Canada, and uh, we encourage you to jump, jump online. You don't, have to, you don't have to travel across Canada wherever the meeting is being held. You can go online now and participate that way. It's really great. And you can hear all the reports that are happening and, and all the good stuff. We have opportunities in Thailand. We have opportunities uh, in several places around the world right now that we're looking for workers for. We have some potential workers that uh, are coming along, new ones. It takes a long time to develop a linguistic translator. It isn't something you can just do tomorrow. I know you, if you were to sit down and learn a new language, how long does it take you to learn so you can become proficient in it and work? And we, of course, we're, we're dealing with Bible translation, of course, which is very critical that we get it right. You don't want to translate the Bible into something that it isn't, doesn't say. And the Bible warns against that very, very clearly, too, as well. We have seven different groups that we sponsor as a congregation financially and many more that we financially or support with our, with our time and our efforts. So take the time to look it up. But especially the seven that, we're, that we sponsor financially, like the Bible Translators Canada, they have a binder, and again, in the um, cafe. And if you look up what's happening, all the updates are there for you week to week to week. If we were to put it into, into your bulletin every week, all the things that are happening, you'd have a bulletin that's almost a little booklet. So like I said, there's lots going on in the mission field. Look it up and welcome again this morning. Thank you, Ron, for being with us. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, God bless you for your mission heart and the ways you keep us informed about what's going on in the church and in the world as far as missions is concerned. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Ah, uh, we worship this day in Jesus' holy name. We recognize the presence of our triune God who is with us, our Father, Creator, the Son, our Savior, Jesus, who lives in us and is risen from the dead for us. And the Holy Spirit who fills this place with his presence, the Holy Spirit who fills our lives and our hearts with his gifts and his fruits, the Holy Spirit who creates and sustains faith in us, in Jesus, our Savior. With all of that in mind, we as a family of faith gather together in the joy of our salvation and in the full knowledge of our God who pours out his grace and mercy upon us in every moment of our lives. So let us praise our God together in our opening hymn this morning, in your celebration hymnals, hymn number 352.
We worship this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But if you God's grace knows no bounds. Through the sacrifice of his son, the bridegroom of the church, he makes us his holy bride. Anticipating the wedding feast of the Lamb, let us seek God's grace now and call on him for forgiveness and mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, for we cannot help ourselves. Forgive us all that we have done in the past. Give us grace in this present time. And lead us to serve you and love one another in the future and on into eternity. Jesus promised his disciples and he promises you. Your sorrow will turn into joy. And he promises the spring of the water of life without payment will be poured out upon you. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, which bestows Christ's saving work on all people of faith, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, that the saving news of Christ be announced to all, and that many come to faith, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house. And for all who join us to celebrate the foretaste of the feast to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We sing together our hymn of praise, hymn number 92, again in your celebration hymn.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from Acts 11, verses 1 to 18. Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in his house and say, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is also called, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 148 in unison. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded, and they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, all deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, Beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the people of Israel who are near to him. 
Praise the Lord. The epistle is taken from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he, was, and he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <laughs> Please rise for the gospel acclamations. <laughs> for this day from the gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare, declare to you the things that are to come. He, he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I say that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So they said to him, or he said to them, is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has given birth, she, uh, uh, when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a woman, that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but you will see me again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. 
Please be seated. We sing together our next song, 778. name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends in Christ. Our text today comes to us from the epistle lesson from Revelation 21. The one who conquers will have this heritage. I will be his God and he will be my son. This is our text. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who brings peace the one who declares his peace, the peace that not the world can give, but all the peace that he gives. In his name, dear friends. Do you remember Gomer Pyle, USMC? Golly! Well, he was a resident of Mayberry with Andy Griffith, but then he got, he enlisted in the army. And his drill sergeant was a typical drill sergeant. And when he met Gomer, <laughs> things kind of sparked. But the thing I remember is the drill sergeant saying to Dear old Gomer Pyle, I know you. I own you. You are mine. Now he said it with a bit of meanness in his voice. And he meant to mold that Mayberry hillbilly into a Marine. I'm not sure it ever took place, but the series ended and life went on. But God says to you the same thing. He says, I have called you by name. You are mine. 
And he doesn't say that with meanness or with an angry agenda. As all of our hymns have stated today, and all of the scripture readings have stated today, he calls you his own in love. You are his. And yes, you are his to mold and to shape. Yes, you are his. And his alone. And he is jealous for you. He wants you to be his alone. But all of that, all of that is spoken, all of that is done, and all of that is his will for you out of his love. You are his from the moment of your baptism until you die. That's saved through Jesus and through faith in him that is created in the moment of your baptism by water and the word. But scripture goes even farther than that, doesn't it? Scripture claims that God has known you since before you were conceived in your mother's womb. Scripture states that he has molded and shaped you in, his, in your mother's womb. With his loving hand and with his loving care. He has known you from that time. You are his. And that's not to say that you're saved because you're born from a Christian mother. You're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. But that is to say that your creator knows you, just as he knows every child within its mother's womb. That's why it's so important to have this mindset and this understanding of being for life and protecting the life of the, the pre-born child. So important to recognize that in a world that denies it. Denies that that child from the moment of conception is a human being, a creation of their God. But as we said, God is a God of love. And he calls us by name out of his love. And so that love extends to all sinners. That love extends to all who know him and love him. Because he has first loved them. And so that love extends to everyone. A woman who has given her child to, uh, in the midst of an abortion. God loves that woman, that mother, just as he loves that child. God loves everyone because he has called us each by name and longs to hold each one in his loving embrace. You belong to him by birth because he created you. You belong to him because of the new birth he's given you in Jesus, your savior. You are his by marriage because you are the bridegroom of Christ. You are the bride of the bridegroom, Jesus, your husband, the husband of the church. And we are called to be faithful, faithful to our bridegroom. You are his because he bought you with a price. 
There's an old song that just rings in my heart. And the refrain goes, God singing to you. Mine, mine, two times you're mine. Once because I made you, and once because I bought you, now you're mine, mine. Two times you're mine, and both times because I loved you so. He has invested his wealth in you. The wealth of his creative power and the wealth of his saving love. What have you and I done with that gracious heritage that our text speaks of? We have that heritage through the one who has conquered death for us, the one who has paid the price for sin for us. What have we done with our inheritance? The inheritance that we have right now, being his own. It's so easy to forget whose we are. It's so easy to live as his children on Sunday and then by Monday morning or even by Sunday afternoon, we're again living as if the world owns us and we belong to the world. It's so easy to be unfaithful to the bridegroom because this world is so full of that which drives a wedge between bride and bridegroom, even in the worldly sense, but especially in the spiritual sense. How easy it is for a a bride and bridegroom in this world to be split apart by the things that draw us away from each other draw us away from the love that we, that we have for one another and draw us into the world. How easy it is for that to happen in the secular realm. It's equally and even more powerfully happening in the spiritual realm. Because not only do you have the world pulling at you, but you have the devil at work pulling at you too. You want to be faithful to one who lives way up there? The one who lived 2,000 years ago and you think he still has an interest in you? The devil wants you to believe that Jesus is far away. But God's word tells you he is near. Your bridegroom loves you. Your bridegroom is near to you, closer than anything else in all the world. Your bridegroom embraces you more tightly than anyone else in the world, than anyone else in all creation. And your spouse, your Christian spouse, is a a sign of God's gracious love to you. It's so easy for us to have affairs with the world around us. We do that all week long and then come back to God's house as if nothing has happened and nothing has changed. As if we've been relishing his arms holding us and his protection around us all the time. As if we've been fully conscious of his presence with us in every moment of the week. When we've been much more conscious of the world and its draws upon our lives. We come back to God's house on Sunday morning as if we've been talking to our bridegroom all week long, praying without ceasing from morning till night. Oh, it's so easy to slip away from our bridegroom. 
to squander the heritage that our bridegroom brings to us, his bride. It's so easy to slip back into the bondage that the world and the devil held us in prior to our salvation. The devil oppresses us, but Jesus, your bridegroom, releases you. The devil wants to deceive you and is so good at it. But the bridegroom, Jesus, says he is the truth. The devil tempts. But Jesus, your bridegroom, says with every temptation, I will give you a means of escape so that you can bear up under it. And he strengthens us against every temptation that comes our way. And how does he do that? By his love. Unconditional for you. The devil is all about death. Eternal death. That's what he wants for those who are the bride of Christ. But your bridegroom is all about life. Not just his eternal life, but bringing that gift to you too. Cling to your bridegroom. Bring, cling to the heritage that he brings you. Cling to the joy of knowing that he has called you by a new name and he will never abandon you. And how do we make that clear to the world around us? Glenn was talking today about our mission as the church and the mission as the bride of Christ, with Jesus as our bridegroom, is to make the world aware, our neighbors, our co-workers, our children, and our grandchildren, aware of whose we are and what he has done to make us his own. Your neighbor looks at you working in the yard, or perhaps building a deck on the back of your house, or talking over the back fence with your good friend, the neighbor behind you. And who does it look like to your neighbors that you belong to? From outside, it looks like you're just a part of the regular working of the neighborhood, a part of the world. But you and I know that's not true. Everything we do, working in the yard, exhausted as that might make us be, building a deck on our house, or simply talking to our neighbor, it's Jesus at work in us. How do you help your neighbor know that it's Jesus? at work in you, doing everything in your life. You do that by bringing Jesus into your conversation. You do that by making sure people know that our Father is our God, that Jesus is our Savior. He gives me the strength to do this. He gives me the endurance to make it through the whole yard in one shot. He gives us all that we need to make relationships happen and to bless friendships. Make that clear to your neighbors. When your coworkers look at you and see that you got passed over for a promotion, perhaps it was because you have a limited schedule and you can't go into work 24-7 or you reserve Sunday mornings for 
God time. When your work, or workers look at you at the photocopier, making your copies for work, and you know that other people use that photocopier to make copies of some other things that we won't talk about. <laughs> when your coworkers see you staying late night after night because you've got a huge project due and you want to make sure that it's right, who does it look like you belong to? Does it look like the company owns you because you work late? Does it look like you're a doormat for other people to walk all over you because you choose to do something right or you choose to have your priorities of your spiritual life in order? How do you make it clear to your coworkers that everything you do is because Christ is your bridegroom? Because God has called you by name and you are his. You do that by making sure that Jesus is a parent in your office. Do you have anything hanging on the walls of your cubicle or your office that speak about your faith? It could be as simple as that. When you go somewhere within your company, do you have a cross around your neck or a pin that you have on your lapel? Do they know Jesus? is with you, and you honor his presence. When God looks at us, who does it look to him like we belong to? When God sees us in our everyday lives, when God sees us in our everyday clothes, when God sees us even in our everyday sins, who does it look to God like we are? whose we are? Well, the easy answer would be to say that, well, God looks down on us and sees us as part of the world and as part of the, the sinful world around us and as belonging to the devil and our own selves, putting our, our, our own selves forward. But brothers and sisters in Christ, in Christ, when God sees us in our everyday clothes and even sees us in our everyday sins, he still does not look at us as we belong to the world. Because you are in Christ. He still has called you by his new name. And you still are his child. Just like the prodigal son who squandered his heritage, we often do the same thing. But the Father welcomes us. The Father puts the ring on our finger and the robe of righteousness over our shoulders. The Father makes a feast for us and welcomes us to that feast where we receive again our heritage, our inheritance, and our relationship with him as, a, as his bride. Jesus is our bridegroom. God still sees us in Christ, covered by his blood, clothed with his righteousness, forgiven of all our sins, God says to you, two times you're mine. Once because I made you. Once because I bought you. You are mine. Forever. In Jesus' name and in Jesus' love. Amen. 
And the peace of God that passes all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please rise and let us confess our faith in our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten with Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and who was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God on behalf of the church and all people in their various needs, including in our prayers today a prayer for the congregational meeting taking place after worship today, a prayer for Cecil and for Esther, members of this congregation who are suffering and in need of God's presence, comfort, and healing. We'll also pray for those grieving the deaths of, of uh, those in the massacre that occurred in Buffalo yesterday. And we also pray for our uh, upcoming provincial election, that God would raise up those wise leaders who would lead us in his way, in his truth. Let us pray. You told Peter, what God has made clean, do not call common. Remember those people on the margins of society, O Lord. Provide caring people and institutions, open doors of opportunity and free them from the results of their past poor decisions. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Peter and the others recognized that they could not stand in God's way. Guide the church's clergy and lay leaders here and around the world to seek your will. Guide the members of this congregation as they meet today in their congregational meeting. With your wisdom and your, and your gifts from your spirit that will guide us into greater service in your kingdom and in this community. Lord Jesus, working together creatively, help us find new ways to spread the gospel in accord with your will. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, in John's vision you proclaimed, Behold, I am making all things new. Graciously work through the talents and knowledge of meteorologists and naturalists and engineers and visionaries as they seek to find ways to renew the health of this planet. In the midst of flooding that's going on in many places around this country, grant peace to those who are suffering and grant wisdom to those who are seeking to mitigate the powers of the, of the water that, that is flooding out many people's homes and livelihoods. Grant seed time and harvest, sun and rain, Produce, let them produce bountiful harvests 
that we all rejoice in many of your, in your many blessings. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord over all, as you foretold, often we will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. And so we see injustice, oppression, constant warfare, and unrest in many nations. And we see it in the community of Buffalo, New York, as, as they re, recoil at the, uh, at the uh, massacre that happened there yesterday. Raise up wise leaders intent on serving their citizens, police, and first responders focused on maintaining the peace. And armed forces determined to reestablish calm in so many places around our globe. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We come before you asking your blessing on all those who are in need of your physical comfort and peace. Your healing for body and healing for soul. And we especially pray for that comfort, peace, and healing for Cecil and Esther. Give to them all that they need to know your presence with them, your healing hand upon them, and especially your love for them. Bridegroom of the church, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the future work and ministry of our congregation. We specifically pray that in your good time you would extend a call to a pastor for full-time ministry among us. We pray that our faith in you would be strengthened through his ministry of word and sacrament. We pray that we would be equipped through his ministry for good works that bring glory to you. In turn, we ask that we would be so moved to love him and his family, welcoming them with open arms as fellow redeemed brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Heavenly Father, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in you that you have heard us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, in your celebration hymnals 630. <laughs>
Please rise as we bring our offerings to our God. We pray together. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, to you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come, for all is now ready. We sing together the Agnes Day. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, and us upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away Welcome to the Lord's table. Please rise and let us give thanks to our God. We pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless... Oh, goodness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing together about that peace. The peace like a river. 